Hi, everyone. Welcome to our super spooky Ask Julie Anything tonight. We've got Larry and Charlie with us live from Dubai, the Woo! owners of Podega, and Julianne Lee, as always. Hi, guys. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We're so happy that you're here. A couple housekeeping items before we get started. Um, Larry and Charlie are going to do a small presentation. We're going to talk about scary pet food ingredients, and we'll do Q&A at the end. If you want to let us know if you can hear us in the chat, that'd be great. Hi, everyone. And if you can change your status to all panelists and attendees so we can all join the conversation, that'd be great. Hi, Stancy. Um, next thing, Q&A. If you have Q&A, submit them to me. I'll moderate, and we can ask them towards the end of the presentation. Without further ado, should we get into this super spooky evening? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I, uh, I, I was hoping we could start, you guys, um, Charlie and Larry. Tell us, tell us kind of how you got started and, and how this all began and a little bit about your journey, if you don't mind. Yes, of course. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, how we first started depends like are we starting from the beginning beginning or <laughs> like uh i, think I guess it's our... nice. i think it's nice for people to know like like who you are and like for yeah. life from dubai and like well, how how that even happens <laughs> and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we well we uh used to live in germany together we met in new york and <laughs> we used to live in germany together and we had a dog there milka and we moved to Dubai with her because Larry got a job here. And very early in her life, she already had a lot of issues, like a lot of issues, a lot of throwing up, a lot of hot spots popping up all, all the time. And just things like that, that we now know were all related to gut health. But back then it was just like, it seemed know. unrelated to us but yeah. um yeah so we had um a friend who actually studied to become a vet in germany and she was always saying no don't feed raw don't don't do it like it's really bad for dogs and um we got to a point where we just went to vet after vet and changed to so many premium dog foods and you know we went to the pet store and we were just completely um like overwhelmed and we didn't know what is the best best food and we didn't know like how to figure out like it was just so we were just talking about this the other day like we just we tried to google it but nothing really helped to figure out like anything back then so so yeah the only thing actually it, it always sounds so weird when we say this but when we switched our dogs to a raw food diet it just went away like the throwing up stopped the diarrhea stopped the hot spot stopped like it was just it was so and like so crazy to a point where we were just like we what is this it was like we woke up like we were like oh my god what is this what is this and so why 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 are um like health professionals telling us not to feed it yeah it was just like it it didn't make any sense to us like so then that's when we dug deeper and doing research and then we found out there's so many success stories behind feeding fresh and going uh, the natural route to pet health. And, and we just dug some research. We did, we, we, you know, picked up the camera and that's when we went to the Raw Natural Dog Summit in Chicago two years ago, where was we met you and others. Three years ago or two years ago? Um, I think it was two years ago, right? Yeah, two years ago. Well, two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, two years ago. So we, and then we picked up the camera and we just like, that's when everyone wanted to talk and we were like, wow, we have to put this together. And then, you know, we were, we started helping more dogs along the way every time we picked up the camera and pick up the camera, I mean, pick up a phone, you know, and, and do an Instagram story or take a picture of the food that we're feeding. So it's not like, like, a whole filming thing all the time you know so it's just like just inspiring others to like help their pets live a healthier life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, it was. I remember meeting you guys at that. You were yeah. like, it was. It was fun. It was a. It was a good time. It, it, I think because you were so, um, um, like, what is this? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you're getting everybody really like, okay, this is cool. Like somebody's, somebody's. It it it's almost like you forget what you felt. Like I forget what I felt like. Yeah, when I, when I realized it because it was so long ago, right? Yeah. So you guys yeah. are like, we have to film this, we have to get this yeah. out. We have to, yeah. It sort of like re sparked uh -huh. everybody. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it was awesome. It, it was really crazy because, like, we we just like, it, like you said, like it was a spark, you know, and it was like, wow, all of this amazing information, and, and we had no idea about half of the things that we heard, you know. We were hearing it for the first time and I know I we knew that if we were hearing it for the first time there's a whole lot of people that would be hearing this for the first time too yeah. so and we we believe in uh knowledge is power so we like to share and what did you when you did that filming what was it what was it called your little your your little film that you put out uh, uh, it's on YouTube now. yeah it's, yeah that's what I think. what's it called we didn't really give it a name actually we just said it's a pet cancer awareness uh, documentary okay. kind of because yeah. just so many amazing like pet health professionals and holistic vets gave us so much good like we were honestly we were so surprised that everyone was so happy to talk to us yeah I mean, like and okay. and also it was we were really nervous about like or i was nervous because i never did interviews like like I never walked up to someone and said, hey, can I interview you? So it's like, I felt weird, you know, I was in a shell that yeah. was like, I don't know if I can ask her this question, you know, like, and then they were like, I'm so happy that everyone was so willing to talk to us because it would have been really, really hard to get that type of information. Yeah. And then when you went to Super Zoo and you were doing it, you're like, oh, <laughs> Hey, over here. I want to play. Yeah. Well, we went to Super Zoo. I had I had more equipment. I, I was rolling around with my, my camera and and gimbal and everything. Like, yeah, bring it on now. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. You guys are amazing, and you know I really like that motto. It totally hits home that yeah. knowledge is power because that's what this community is all about education sharing you know being kind to one another i i think that's that's awesome and it's something that we should all really keep in mind yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think i think everybody can have different views and it's it, mm -hmm. i used to say to people at my clinic because people talk about witches and i was trying to find my witch hat i was like well i should just put my that my that white lab coat on because it, there we go see i that's there that was me that was me in 1997 when everybody thought i flew in on a broom <laughs> a tighter what's a tighter raw food are you what's rough like like it was like you couldn't find anything on the internet really wow then. and you know i always would just say like give people information and then they can make the best choice for what fits for them, right? Like, so that's what we're trying to do too, is just, you know, invite, invite people to ask questions, invite different, different opinions, but in a really super safe space. Yeah. yeah. There are so, there's so much, you know, black and white, but the gray is way bigger. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm so much happier moving around in the gray right you can do so yeah. much more in that because yeah. it's 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 uh you know a lot of people fit into that zone yeah right? mm -hmm. and one side or the other and yeah. i think people tend to think that that's the way that we want them to be you mm -hmm. know either all in or all out yeah and that's just not that's just not not the case for a lot of people yeah yeah we actually like we completely agree with that as well like that when when people come and look for help from us or the people that we speak to on like our dms and stuff like we always 
make sure to say like you don't have to go full raw like you or whatever you do like just go one step at a time because it was the same with us like we struggled so much to make that initial decision to actually switch to raw and we went like we we said and we're just going to try it first and see what it does and then we have we seen such great improvement that we just stick with it but like once you start something your your comfort zone will just open up and yeah. that's such a beautiful thing to watch like to just you know like then think about oh okay how can i naturally look into flea and tick prevention or yeah. how can i naturally do this and it's just it's really awesome like once that ball gets rolling so it's definitely not an a black and white thing or like a yes and no thing so yeah yeah but it does because well knowledge becomes contagious mm -hmm. yeah you know like you start you start learning and opening up new areas and you're you're it's just a it's just yeah it's just for me but, it is it's just and what's yeah. so cool is it doesn't matter when you get into it yeah you know, when you're three or when you're 93 yeah you know it's it's always something that you can expand on right mm -hmm. all right well it's um it's a the what we're going to talk about or what you guys are going to talk to us about is a um it is scary it's scary to it's scary to to actually think like it's yeah. fun because it's halloween and stuff but it it's it's really not fun yeah it's not funny it's not, and it, yeah. no and it's um you know it's but it, it's almost like you have to present it in a place where because there are a lot of people who are going to feel guilty, right? And it's not yeah. about it's not about guilt. It's about yeah. you know doing one step better yeah. than, than you're than you're doing, or that you know trying trying to do the very best that you can. But you can't do your very best if you don't know. Exactly. So that's yeah. what you guys yeah. are going to do, right? Yeah. You're going to let yeah. people know what it what what we have to look out for and what they have to have to read on labels and understand. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna mute myself in case my dog starts to bark, dogs start to bark. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so um, we just also wanna say one more time that what we're gonna talk about, we don't want to scare anybody and we don't want to make anybody feel like bad about themselves or or anything like that we really just want to let you know what to look out for so that we can all make uh informed decisions so yeah let's try and figure out some of the scary pet food ingredients that are out there yeah so um so number one what, where should we start you want to start with the number one pet food ingredient okay yeah so the number one pet food ingredient um that's used in uh all types of pet food or no in pet food in general is yeah, the number and, one pet food ingredient yeah and um it's actually corn so corn is the number one used pet food ingredient and the reason why this is a scary ingredient is because over 90% of corn is actually gen genetically modified. And genetically modified ingredients can actually be very harmful to the body. So it's an endocrine is disruptor and um, they're known to be carcinogenic to the body. So um, we have a, a little graph. Actually, there's a few things. So I'm just gonna show you this here. And this is by the USDA. And it shows all of the um, most used uh, genetically modified ingredients. So we have um, soybeans at the very top. So soybeans is one of, is actually higher than corn. And then you have cotton and then you have corn. So we're gonna talk about these three items um, because I was actually shocked about this one and how it can be harmful to actually our pets because when i was looking at it i was like oh that's not even uh food but anyway we're going to talk about how that 
this ingredient ends up in pet food. So corn, um, as, as I said, is the number one used um, pet food ingredient. And, uh, and I'll show you where, and this is according to ifeaters.org, um, and corn is the number one, uh, can you see that? Corn, corn is the number one ingredient uh, uh, before chicken, and then you have meat and bone meal. So these three ingredients, we're gonna, well, we're not gonna talk about all of them, but we're gonna talk about two of them anyway. Um, so yeah, and then. So the reason why corn is so scary is like Larry said, GMO. Uh, and I think you're gonna talk, talk a little bit more about like why that is scary, but also because it's something that our dogs didn't really evolve to eat and we wouldn't really recommend feeding it because it's really hard to digest and there's really not much nutrition in it. And also the corn that is used for pet food is usually the corn that's not used for human food. So it's like kind of like the corn byproduct. So the, the, the byproducts fr from the human waste. So it really doesn't have any nutrition or not not, not much. much so yeah yeah i mean that's 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 uh um one of the scary things about corn is what i would say um and then and then i would talk about uh soy so actually um we hear a lot about um grain versus grain free so for me um it it's like it's like number one, uh, a starch is a starch. So whether whether it's coming from corn or if it's coming from rice or soy, um, soy protein, at the end of the day, uh, we still have a problem here that that we need to talk about. So which is um, legumes as well. So then we have uh, soy, which is uh, right now currently in America is. Uh, 94% of soy is actually genetically modified. So um, that's, that's another thing where, you know, it's, it's something that we don't really want to see in pet food or we don't really like to see it in pet food because of uh, these genetically modified ingredients. Okay, so now, so now we touched on corn and we touched on soy. And now I want to talk about this one right here. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to put that up. So we talked about soybeans and we talked about corn. So how it climbed up the list in the last 10 years or so. So this is 2010, actually, let's go back 15 years ago and how it just jumped up. These ingredients are over 80% uh, on the list, but cotton. So cotton is, was really shocking to me because cotton, I was like, man, like, why, why am I going to show this list? Uh, cotton has nothing to do with pet food, but actually, we're actually wrong because um, the byproduct of cotton, you can actually turn cotton into vegetable oil. And I, was, and I didn't actually think about that. Like, vegetable oil can be um, put into animal feed, so it doesn't necessarily have to go to our pets, it doesn't have to necessarily be used as an ingredient on pet food. So when you're looking at the bag of pet food, it might not say uh, vegetable oil, or it may say vegetable oil. Yeah, How, I've seen that before. Yeah, vegetable oil, oil is used in pet food, but it can be used in the animal feed. So for example, chickens. So to, um, to feed whatever kind of food that they eat, if it's not just corn, which again, genetically modified. So it, we talk about, uh, I didn't even think like, oh wow, vegetable oil from cotton, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, because when, when Larry was telling me this yesterday, like the, the cotton is uh, so much genetically modified and I was just thinking about t-shirts, like, okay, that's why organic t-shirts are a thing. But Larry was like, no, no, actually, it's also a thing in pet food. Wow, like, that's crazy. I had no idea, that's, that's mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's scary. It's really scary. Like what actually, um, 
yeah, hides behind a simple ingredient such as vegetable oil. Yeah, which again, we're going to talk about this a little later, but when something isn't specified, so when something isn't like a vegetable oil is very genetic, it could be anything. So that's something that we also recommend staying away from anything generic like that. So, mm -hmm. but did you say why, why the GMO, like why not to feed GMO ingredients? Yeah, because Should we say, like, okay. Yeah. Because uh, the reason you don't want to feed genetically modified ingredients and that's, it's, it's true for our animals and ourselves as well. So um, GMO ingredients, they like how the plant grows and maybe Julie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe, or you can say it better, but how, how they're grown, they, they are, so they're grown in a field and then they're able, to, you're able to spray um, or you don't need pesticide on it. Yeah, or you can you, just spray and everything else dies. Yeah, so everything and, around yeah. the plant will die except for the the vegetable. So they genetically... It can sorry? Be, it can actually be two ways. So okay. genetically modified can actually have a type of pesticide that is embedded within the seed. Mm -hmm. So you can yeah. do that. But the reason that they started GMO was because when they would split, uh, spray glyphosate, the, the, everything would die, including the vegetables. So including the, the plants that they were trying to kill the bugs from, right? Mm -hmm. everything, everything would just die. So, that they, so they started to genetically modify seeds to not die from it. Mm. So, so everything else, else will die, but it won't die. It, it, it can handle, it can handle the, the, the pesticide. But the problem is, is that that pesticide can't be washed off. Mm. So even though it's killing, it's killing the plants, it's actually embedded into the, into the, into the plant. So you can't, no matter what you, and when it's milled, a genetically modified plant that has been sprayed with it, when it's milled, I think it was, it winds up being 30 times more potent from the vibration of the milling, the way the milling goes. So when you're actually ingesting it or an animal's ingesting it, they're ingesting it, it, it becomes 30 times more potent when, when they mill it. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like a, it's almost like a super bug, not really a super bug, but, but, something that becomes even more toxic when it becomes processed. Mm. Yeah. So that, that's what makes it very scary. And, you know, and then when, when we think about, okay, and like now we're putting it into our body and we're, we're feeding it to our animals, you know, what's it doing to the body, you know? So we know that these gen genetically modified ingredients are, um, they they're known to be carcinogenic, you know? So, you know, we, we look at uh, the number one uh, the number one used ingredient in pet food is genetically modified, and then we look at cancer rate in, in dogs, and we look at cancer rate in humans. You know, these things like closely parallel each other. And I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but I know one plus one equals two. You know, so we like when you try to think about these things. You know, it's it's. It's what makes it really scary, you know, so nobody likes to point the finger at anything specific, but I think it's something that we really need to look at, you know, just in general, you know, and maybe we should stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Well, anytime you, you are changing genetics, mm -hmm. anytime you are manipulating genetics, it's been a very controversial subject for a very long time right because you're it's 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 mutation yeah. right same with farmed fish it's the same with a lot of things that you just don't think are genetically modified are mm -hmm. are genetically modified they're 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 bred and changed to produce something that's really unnatural mm -hmm. yeah yeah, you know, and, and I just think, you know, all the time, 
like with with pet food labeling and just in general how how i think always like the the pet industry itself is one of the worst regulated industries in the world and then when we get away from pets when when we actually when we look at the regulations for just animals in general so cows and fish they their regulations are so much worse than pets and pets is, is already bad so just i can't even imagine you know how really bad it is for just animals you know yeah. so um and then how how we like there's there's another ingredient like i I'm, I'm just i can't even believe that it's in pet food you know how how it how it ends up in our bodies as humans too you know even though it's banned in human food you know so we're going to get on that and uh shortly but yeah. I, I just like i'm just my mind is going other places because it's just like it makes me so angry you know like mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And then you, you, I mean, I'm going to, you should just keep talking, but when you, when you think about that, like you, how you were saying about how, how it's even less regulated in animal food, right? Mm -hmm. In livestock food. And the concept around that is because they don't live very long, right? Mm -hmm. they, like, you know, when they do research on it, they're really only caring on are they are they healthy enough to be slaughtered right yes. which could range from anywhere from you know eight weeks old if you're a chicken to six months if you're a cow four days if you're a calf a year you know less than a year for a cow so yeah. when they're when they're looking at that their 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 research and their data is is within that that lifespan of of a of a food a food animal so you know there's there's the whole thing too of you know food chains mm -hmm. so so here <laughs> excuse me here's let's just use a chicken because chicken was on that list right yeah yeah you know when we talk even about genetically modified chickens with covid a lot of people are getting they're getting chickens, right? A lot of people are planting gardens, doing the whole homestead thing, which I, I think is awesome. Yeah. But when I was talking to some people, especially people around here that used to be, they were used to having chickens with their parents and when they were growing up or their grandparents, and now they're 60, 70 years old, eight, sometimes 80 years old. And they're mm -hmm. like, there's something wrong with our chickens that we bought. And I, I'm like, okay, what, you know, what's, what's, what's wrong? Well, they can't walk or they don't walk. They just, because they're bred, you know, that their breasts get so, so big, they're genetically so modified, the chicken themselves, that they can't walk after a certain age because they're meant to grow really super duper fast, like, like scary, creepy fast, just like, well, scary. Mm -hmm. And if you don't slaughter them within that time frame they literally cannot walk. They just walk. flop over because they're just, they're, they're, their legs can't hold their bodies up. Wow. Where we got chickens and we got heritage chickens, so non-genetically modified chickens, and they look like normal chickens and they're, my goodness, they're like seven months old now mm -hmm. and they're, they're completely look like normal chickens. Yeah. So when you, and then what they've proven that when you eat something, so here we have genetically modified chickens and we have feeding those genetically modified chickens, genetically modified corn yeah. and whatever else the heck is in it. When it's bad enough for the chicken, but then when your dog eats it or your cat eats it or you eat it, that food chain, the toxicity level grows exponentially on the food chain with with whomever larger above them is ingesting them right mm. so again it's like it's like when when the genetically modified food or grain is milled it becomes even more toxic it's the same thing when you're going up on the food chain yeah it's it's horrific okay go yeah Sorry. <laughs> no, thank, you. Yeah. thank you so much for adding that it's just it's yeah it's so crazy like to to really dig into this kind of stuff like it's really scary 
So the the next ingredient that we're gonna talk about is actually it's a few ingredients. Yeah. Hold on, which one are we gonna talk about? Okay, good. All right, yeah, it is a few is it four ingredients. Four o'clock in the morning there for you guys or something? Uh it is five thirty AM. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So it is um, the other one that Larry uh, just called up. So it is meat and bone meal that we want to talk with you guys about. And it is the third used ingredient in pet food. Um, the for first, cats and dogs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for cats and dogs. And um, yeah, the reason that this is so scary is because of the use of the four meats. Four deer. No, sorry, 4D. <laughs> 4D meats. So um, do you, does anybody know what 4D meats are? Um, it is dead, dying, diseased, or disabled animals. And um, so basically, uh, it is a lot. Of, it's basically like a dumping ground for... Well, okay, let me not jump too too fast ahead, but so so basically it's it's uh the meat that is not fit for human consumption, yeah, so um the f d a believes that um d four meat uh, sorry forty meat should not be um fed to to anybody uh human or or pet, but it is okay if you render it um so you bring it to a processing plant and you basically cook it for like an extended amount of time at high heat to um, remove all the pathogens. Um, and then it is safe for pet consumption. So um, it has almost no nutrition left, but that's not the only issue with it. So the, the issue with 4D meat is that basically the rendering plants accept anything and everything from expired grocery meat inside the packaging so the it's basically like a container where they cook everything in and they just dump everything in there they don't like most of them don't uh, separate like they just dump everything in and so the grocery meat would actually get dumped in there with the plastic packaging that would then be boiled with to to be made into pet food so that then zoo animals dead zoo animals um dead roadkill whatever it is um dead shelter dogs like euthanized shelter dogs actually and that is a big thing why this came up over here uh, where they said dog food brand, a dog food brand was recalled because brands. yeah, or yeah, mo multiple brands were recalled because of the because they found the euthanasia drug in the pet food, which, which is commonly used to uh, put down pets. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you, if you just heard me say this, but this means like that our dogs or cats are actually consuming dogs and cats so that that's the first thing that is that's like blowing my mind with this when 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 you look closer at it i mean that that's that's just insane and and the way that that dogs and cats will end up in pet food is that it would say meat meal which doesn't distinguish is it chicken meal or is it beef meal it's just meat meal so it can literally be anything it yeah. can be a dog it can be a cat it can be a, a deer it can be a polar beer like from a zoo it, it's really we just don't you know and the, and the thing also and this this happens in uh north america um it's not allowed yeah, this this stuff is actually not allowed. However, it's not it's it's not exactly regulated either. And so, when you see ingredients like this on on uh, pet food on a like 
any type of pet food if you ever see it and you're like let me call the manufacturer and and find out if if this bag of food contains uh the kitten that was euthanized down the block i don't know right if you you decide to call them and when you call them they say no we don't use cats and dogs or any other euthanized animals in our in our food and like no nobody is going to admit this right how it happens and how these these type of animals end up in pet food is they the manufacturer doesn't process the uh these type of animals in their facility they buy it as an ingredient from a rendering plant so they buy it like they buy it okay and then they they accept it but they don't necessarily have like a whole list of every animal that went into this meat meal because it's just so it's it's just so it's such a massive operation and the rendering plans are not really transparent about what they're doing either so it, it is very like it's yeah it's it's I very very that's important for people to understand because i think i i don't it it doesn't it doesn't the pet food companies aren't going out and buying no, knowing that they're buying yeah mm -hmm. what they don't really know what they're buying they're assuming <clears throat> they're assuming when it says meat yeah it's not fit for human consumption which could be a lot of different things but i think what happens is that re rendering plants are massive like rendering dead render comes in in shipload containers mm -hmm. right like it's it's huge what's in there the average person even working at the rendering plant doesn't even know what's in there there there's the there are these big massive shipping containers that are closed and then they're lifted right yeah. it's lifted up and it's it's dumped in or the other gross thing that that happened when i was living in bc is that there was a rendering site but they didn't have the lids Art. closed yeah. so people were throwing garbage in it oh. too right like all kinds of garbage not on like i don't know whatever like they were just throwing garbage bags over and this was like a long time ago and then it, then they enforced this thing where they had to have the containers had to have tops on them so that nobody could get into them and then locked so that they couldn't even get into the area but the majority of times when that's getting lifted and dumped into the back it's really mixed up it's mixed up with things that are that are considered um you know when you do spays and neuters or when you do surgery like surgical stuff all that stuff is supposed to be sent and contained in very very strategic places right and it, it's sad to say, but you know, a lot of a lot of big rendering companies are also they're just it's people are dishonest, and mm -hmm. and I think what's what's what I think you said early on, it's just not it's just not um, governed enough. Mm -hmm. There is no possible way that they can guarantee you what's in the, what's in render. Like it's just impossible. It's just there's just not enough people. There's definitely nobody sorting through tons of dead animals and tons of dead animal body parts every time before it gets dumped in. Yeah. So, yeah. Like yeah. I've even heard things that people finding pieces of collars and things like that. Right. This was a while ago, and I think they they tightened it up a little bit, but it it it's still beyond imaginable what goes into that stuff yeah you know um susan Thixon, she she does a lot of research on pet food and pet food ingredients yeah, and, sourcing and and whatnot and she she released an article i think it was like maybe last year around this time um of one of these rendering plants mm -hmm. and she was able to like obtain um, Google satellite imaging um, over one of these plants, which is usually you cannot find anything on these places. Like you're not even allowed anywhere near this place. And 
you better not have a camera around this place because like, so anyway, she was able to get like Google Im satellite imaging and you can see like, just like uh, these containers, as you say, like shipping containers of like, just with open tops, just full of just animals. And you just see like horses just, just laid out, you know, and you can just, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't remember the name of the article, but please check it out or, or we'll link it and we'll drop it into the comment section later. But it's just, it's just horrible. Like just to see all of these animals and you're like, and, and you know that like, because it's not regulated, that it can actually end up as pet food. And, you know, just even a few years ago, um, it, it happened in Canada. There was a news, a news agency um, reported on like this, uh, this shipping, um, no, it, it was a, a transport uh, truck, like some type of transport truck. And they were moving um, uh, animal carcasses. And this truck, it, because it had like, it was just only covered in tarp, it fell over in, uh, in the street. So, so people were walking by and they're like, what, what is this? Like, it was just like, it was disgusting. Like literally just animal parts all over the street because the truck, it was 18 wheeler fell and then they were cleaning it up in the middle of the night. And, but there were still pieces of these animals all throughout the street because they couldn't clean everything. And then, and then when you think about how poorly regulated this is, like, because nobody's really regulating it, they will, they can, they can clean it up put it back on the truck and then still take it to the, to the uh, rendering plant yeah. and still put it in pet food, you know? And it's like, it's just like, it's insane. They, like these articles, we're going to drop them down into the comment section later, but it's just like, it's like, I can't believe it. And, and, you know, it's not like the world doesn't know, you know, the world really doesn't know that this is happening, you know? So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's so frustrating. It's, it's basically a dumping ground for any type of non-human grade meat or dead animals. Like, because, yeah, I mean, we, we even read uh, stories about how like after, you know, after a hurricane, all the livestock that dies and, you know, that just like the millions and millions of livestock that die or that get poisoned, you know, like that where where to go with all of them they just say it would be a waste of landfill space so let's render it and put it in pet food and it's just it's crazy so so what's actually like what's so crazy about it as well is that when you render these uh these dead animals all of the anti or a lot of the antibiotics, the euthanasia drugs, and just all of the chemicals and drugs that are in these animals, they don't actually just disappear. They just, they, they are still in the meat meal. So that is essentially how this recall happened, um, that they found the euthanasia drug uh, in, in the pet food and our dogs are literally eating a food that contains a euthanasia drug. So, and I, I believe in this case that the animals that and and why the, why the why the brands were recalled is because the dogs that ate this this food with this ingredient they actually died. So so that's that's what led to this whole investigation. And then other dogs got sick. You know, so it's just like so you know even though that they cook these things at such extreme temperatures like these drugs are still surviving or have the p possibility to yeah. survive these temperatures and still harm our animals well the temp the temperatures are more for pathogens right for bacteria mm -hmm. bacteria yeah. or if a cow's been dead in a field for six days and it's like decomposing and whatever they'll they'll use that as for a render Mm -hmm. But they know that they know that that type of heat, they, it's killing the pathogens. But drugs and chemicals are very different. They don't they don't break down like pathogens do. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. And the the euthanasia drug that was found in the pet food it was called pentabarbital, and um, it's the it's it's the drug that is used. Um, 
a lot to euthanize dogs and cats. Yeah. So that's how the yeah, that's how we basically know that this is still happening. And there, there was actually um, the uh, president of AFCO, right? The former, former yeah, the, president. The former president of AFCO, actually. There's a YouTube video um, called Former President of AFCO uh, Admits That Pets Are... May, may be used uh, as pet food. Yeah, so check out that video as well. Yeah. 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 That well, is a lot of horses are euthanized. Yeah. So if they're using horse meat, I mean they're not supposed to be euthanized, they're supposed to be shot if they're going for for that. But the majority of trucks that come and pick up a euthanized horse because people don't have the space to to bury them, that's that's where they wind up going. Mm. Yeah. Right. You guys are absolutely blowing my mind over here. Like I'm talking to myself a whole lot, like just saying things like, what? Are yeah. You, yeah. I, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, these so, are just some things, you know, there's just so many yeah. things that are hiding in our ingredients, you know, and, and I would never imagine, you know, if I were to look at an ingredient list and I just see meat mail, that this is what can be hiding in this one single ingredient, you know, yeah. it's just like mm -hmm. so baffling. Yeah. So like something, how to get around it, what to look out for instead would be to look out for actually um, the ingredient called chicken or an ingredient called beef. So if you go, with something that doesn't say chicken meal or a meat meal, it would be a little, yeah, it would be safer to, to then go with a brand that actually uses the actual ingredient. Same with the organ, like um, they'll use byproduct meal uh, in a lot of pet food. And again, that could be anything uh, from a hoof to a beak to anything. Um, and if you went with something that actually said liver, instead of byproduct then that would definitely be much better yeah and now we have our third ingredient yeah so our third ingredient actually falls under meal again um and uh it falls under fish meal uh and fish meal is it's this this one really like like really took me over because um, there's a there's actually a documentary. Um, it's it's on YouTube again. I'm I'm horrible, guys. I'm like I forgot the name, <laughs> but it's on YouTube. I, I think it's called Salmon is the most toxic yeah uh, uh, food uh, in the world. Something like just type in Salmon, the most toxic food in the world. Like Salmon is the most toxic food in the world, and it's for a few different reasons and um yeah anyway so fish meal uh which which is used to uh feed fish um uh it's used and a preservative is added to it um and which is a doxiquin so a doxiquin is a preservative and a pesticide so so this i mean people are like I've read that the reason that it's used is to preserve the fats inside of the fish oil. I mean, inside of the fish meal, right? So a doxiquin um, is is actually used in in fish meal. It's banned. It's in it's banned in human uh, food. I just want to add something to that because you know um, when like we've heard this many times before uh, when people speak about toxic preservatives and preservatives to look out for to never list like never buy a pet food that lists the the toxic preservatives like yeah. for example BHA BHT um, and ethoxyquin. So Larry and I actually went to the pet store one day and checked like okay, does anyone actually name these, these toxic preservatives? Like, because at this point, like there is a, a certain level of uh, awareness about it because they are banned um, and uh, in, in, in the human uh, consumption as well. So, but it still ends up in our pet food, but yeah. not as an ingredient. So that's, 
that's why yeah thank you for know. adding that yeah so just as charlie said like so you know pet parents are more aware to st and we're told to stay away from these preservatives like bha and bht and and ethoxyquin so i was really really shocked when i found out that like actually ethoxyquin is actually used in fish meal and then uh and then that's and this ingredient can still end up in our pet food because the actual ingredient itself is is very poorly regulated i mean it's allowed in animal food so it's it's not that it's uh, not being regulated it's just being hidden you know so it's a hidden ingredient um yeah uh actually ethoxyquin is um it comes from the same makers of uh um roundup so monsanto so i was like oh you guys are back again you know it's like again you know they they've created another drug or um a chemical which can really harm our pets and people that don't know about glyphosate is it's linked i mean it's linked to the uh to all these gmo ingredients and which are being used to spray on gmo foods to kill um unwanted insects and other things uh yeah, so adoxyquin can affect the liver and uh, and the kidneys, and it's, it's a known endocrine endocrine disruptor and known to be carcinogenic. Yeah. 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 Wow, you guys are blowing my mind. This is crazy. Uh, there's a there's a comment here from S. Thank you for doing this presentation. And Barbara said Monsanto, one of the most evil companies in the world can can we talk before we wrap up can we talk a little bit about how do we make better choices for our animals and how do we incorporate some of these you know fresh foods and and try and you know shop organic or things like that mm -hmm. yeah um so definitely um please try to stay away from the ingredients that we've mentioned today um yeah just looking out for the real ingredient like for and there are there are dry food companies and wet food companies who do list chicken instead of chicken meal on and you know the actual organ meats like there are companies out there it's it is hard to find them but uh maybe where you are it's not that hard so um yeah definitely look out for the real ingredients um yeah, I would honestly, fish oil is a thing that is so often recommended by everyone. Uh, it's something that we personally don't feed and we wouldn't recommend it because of, again, ethoxyquin as well. But it's just um, very hard to find a really good source that isn't already rancid or um, it, it's just really hard to find a really, really good source. So. Um, our uh, our recommendation is always to just add some canned fish instead, so um, or or fresh fish uh, that has been previously frozen. So um, we personally feed raw fish, but uh, you can feed like canned sardines in oil or water, mackerel. mackerel. So that like honestly, that's like a, if you're feeding dry food right now. That is such an amazing way to just instantly improve your diet, your dog's diet, to just add some uh, sardines or mackerel to the meals like a couple of times a week. Um, then something else to do is to add some uh, fresh eggs. So raw eggs are amazing, organic. Um, you can get them like really affordable. And uh, just again, like it's a, um, it's an amazing addition to to any dog's diet a couple of days a week and um what else just just raw bits and pieces uh whenever you make your your dinner your own dinner you can just sprinkle some take take some of the veggies that you cut up put them in the um, dog bowl uh, put some of the meat aside um, even some leftovers if you know there's not 
crazy spicing in it but even our dog like we feed her cinnamon and we we use a lot of spices in our food um so we used cumin on her and uh yeah we're just used for trace minerals not yeah. like we'd like cinnamon <laughs> like we're not doing that it's not big amounts <laughs> but like i i think she really enjoys it i i think she i mean yeah yeah she loves it <laughs> the smell of cinnamon is amazing so yeah. she actually really loves it we use it for tr like trace minerals but it's just an added bonus that it smells amazing yeah so it you makes can, the like, food smell you can, so much better you can add things like this like basil oregano yeah like yeah. you can really spice your dog's bowl up <laughs> yeah um sorry and you guys have videos. Um, I saw on your YouTube channel, you have DIY recipes that you guys have put together um, yes. that you share with the community and, and teach us ways that we can start incorporating things like this into our animals' routines. Yeah, exactly. You can find uh, a lot of DIY videos on our channel, a lot of uh, recipes and uh, yeah, it, like we said in the beginning of this uh, call, like it's it's not always about going 100% or nothing. Like there are actually studies out there now that prove that adding as little as 20% to our dog's food, 20% of fresh food, taking out 20% of dry food, it's already such a big improvement that the disease markers in our dogs dramatically go down when we do that. So the more fresh food we can add, the better. And, you know, then adding on top of that pre and probiotics and, you know, all of these other amazing things that we can do for gut health. And that's the number one thing that we work on with our dog because our dog thankfully is very healthy now, but that's not like, we're not at a place where we're, where we're like, we're, we're not sleeping on this healthy state right now. We're just, we're just constantly thinking like, okay. And, and not to stress anyone out that I'm constantly sitting here thinking about this, but like we are, you know, every day adding a little something to increase her gut health. So yeah. yeah. Milka is exposed um, like, cause we're in the desert. So there's like a lot of dead animals yeah. in the desert. So, and she knows exactly where all of the dead animals are and she, and she runs there. It's like, so there's been a decomposing camel. That's, I feel like it's been there for so long. Yeah. That, for almost eight months. Or yeah. And she knows exactly where it is. It doesn't matter where we park in the desert. She, she goes straight there. <laughs> oh. right? and, yeah. And it's like, and it's so gross. I can't even bear the smell yeah. when I go there. I like, I have to like cover everything, but she knows. And then I'm like, I, we tried to not let her like pick on it because you don't know what's on, on this animal. But that's why we always try to focus on building immunity. So we always like try to give her foods that would like boost her immune system. So like, but yeah, there's, there's oh, a lot of animals. She chews on dead fish when we're at the beach. Yeah. She, she finds mm -hmm. gazelles, like she finds it all. She's a <laughs> bullet machine. <laughs> she's a hunter she's a hunter oh, oh she caught her she caught a frog the oh, other day yeah, she did <laughs> she caught <her. laughs> the very first time in her hunting career that she ever caught anything she actually caught a frog yeah. and we were, i didn't think she was going to catch the frog but she had the frog in her mouth we screamed they're like no and she like she spit it out and the frog was like hopping and hopping and it, it, yeah. it lived yeah, but she was super surprised with herself. I, think. <laughs> I love it. Hey, yeah. do we do we can we do ten minutes over time here and answer a couple Q and A? Yeah, of yeah, course. Of definitely. Course. Would that be okay? Yeah. I've got a I've got a few here. Uh, Peggy, she's trying to feed raw. She uses either frozen patties or freeze dried in the morning. Um, she's heard that feeding raw and cooked at the same time is not good. She steams vegetables and adds those. She uses pumpkin, supplements, kefir, blueberries. Am I doing something wrong? You're doing amazing things, honestly. That's like, amazing. <laughs> that, is, that is so amazing. And so many people will say that like, you shouldn't be uh, mixing raw with anything else. And we just, we personally don't agree with it because we think every dog is different. Like some dogs, might really not do well on it but i think that's really the exception and then you can probably be adding some pre and probiotics with that 
and help the dog di properly digest the food and then it will probably be okay. But um, we are a very big uh, supporter of mixing raw with any food because any raw is better than no raw. <laughs> Enzymes help with that too. Like digestive enzymes, if you're mixing different, like cooked or dry or raw, or when you're mixing all different kinds of things, sometimes digestive enzymes give them a little bit of a, a helping hand. Yeah, that's a good point too. Awesome. Tina's got a question. Um, it's about feeding commercial raw to a dog that has high ALT liver and liver values. Ultrasound was good. Looking forward. Just want good food. He's on decinal and milk thistle now, but want good food. Unsure if raw is the way to go. So I guess Tina's question is, if my dog has high ALT liver values, should I be worried about feeding raw? Uh, I think Julie can answer this question better, but I'm sure liver tonic would help, right? <laughs> Yeah, it depends on why the ALT is high, right? Like, you know, there's there's lots of different things that can be lurking. You know, is the ALT high because it's reacting to some kind of a, um, a toxin that it's getting on a regular basis? Is the ALT high because it's, it's there's something going on with... Um, you know, the whole port, like portal system. I think it's, it's important to know why and to do like a full, like when you're doing the blood panel, don't just do his ALT. I would also do a, make sure that his pancreatic enzymes are, are normal. Uh, it's always good to know because if it is something just more in a, in a relationship that the dog is, is, is not, the liver is just not functioning at its optimum. Then, I've seen I've seen liver values go down just by giving them cleaner food, mm -hmm. liver like liver giving them liver tonic and giving them cleaner food. So food that we know doesn't have chemicals in it, food that we know doesn't have genetically modified stuff in it. So, if the liver is taxed or the liver is not functioning how it should be then what you want to do is, is feed the dog the cleanest food that you could possibly feed them. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be as concerned about whether it's raw, whether it's what, whatever it is. It just needs to be as, as chemical and toxic free as you can, as you can possibly get it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Cheyenne has a question um, and a couple of people in the chat also were asking about this. It's about feeding organic. Does it even make a difference to get or organic products? Uh, they charge more for so-called pesticide-free food when everything is in one way or another being touched by chemicals. Uh, that's a great question. Um, personally, I think, especially right now in the situation that we're all in, probably financially, um i think we have to do what works for us and what is gonna ensure that like we can all live <laughs> but um i th i mean we are we do believe that it makes a difference to buy organic instead of um non-organic uh so but you know with that being said there's just so much mislabeling today like I feel like everyone uses the word organic and natural and it doesn't matter if it's pet food or, or, you know, nat natural human products. Um, it's just like, yeah, we, I think we have to just be a little bit more aware of where does this organically, where does this thing that claims to be organic come from? Is it certified organic or is it just a, I mean, we've even seen over here, there is a brand and I'm sure in America, there will be some brands as well doing this. Their brand name is organic something, yeah. but the product itself is actually not organic. So it's, you know, people are getting really, really, um, yeah, yeah. Crazy, like 
clever. I just, I, I just can't deal with all of this, uh, you know, like uh, the smoke and mirror folding. Yeah. yeah, like just all of this uh, trying to be sneaky. Like I just, I don't like it. I just, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 we think that it, it does make a difference to feed organic. However, if you cannot feed organic, it's still okay as long as you're doing the best that you possibly can. Um, that's, that's, that's our, uh, view on organic. I mean, we, we don't eat completely organic ourselves, but we try to eat as much as organic foods as possible. But, um, I mean, I think whatever we can do to reduce, uh, possible toxic loads in our bodies, we should try to do as much as possible whenever we can. Yeah, I would say that too. I would say that you you do it when you can and when you can't, you can't. And when you can't, then, you know, be aware of doing things and that you know is good for the liver, right? Mm -hmm. Like feeding, you know, search different vegetables that you can feed, green leafy vegetables, things, things that help to um, support the, the liver do its job, you know? Like you can go and buy dandelion greens and you can go and buy you know, you know, you can get liver tonic, but you can also buy, you can just go and get the actual, the actual vegetables and stuff too, right? And different kinds of clays and fulvic and humic acid. So, you know, if you're really at a place where you just can't afford it, then, you know, go online and find, there's like, like I said, there's different kinds of clays and, and humic and fulvic acid are, are really good for chelation to help mm -hmm. draw out heavy metals and, and chemicals, ultimately it would be best if you weren't putting them in. But if you, if you don't have a choice and in, in you do the best that you possibly can, right? Mm -hmm. Can I add something? Um, there's a list that circulates and it's called the Dirty Dozen. We could mm -hmm. always just try to avoid foods that are on that yeah. list. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some that are much, much, well, what you guys were saying there's some some things that are much much higher mm -hmm. and way more toxic yes um last question for the speed round it's it's a toughie i don't know the answer i don't know you guys help me out with this one terry wants to know if can organic raw crushed almonds or sunflower seeds be used in a raw diet instead of a vitamin e supplement does uh, anyone know yeah, uh, sunflower seeds or what? Almonds. Almonds. Raw, yeah, yeah, almonds. Actually, we've done this before. Um, we have uh, made recipes with that. But um, I don't feel comfortable feeding that on a daily basis to my dog with only uh, vitamin, like with the vitamin E source only coming from almonds and sunflower seeds. So what we do is we alternate it with uh, hemp seed oil. So hemp seed oil is an amazing source of vitamin E. And it's yeah. best to ground it, yeah. Yeah. Like the, if you can feed the um, seeds grounded. And nuts, soaked. Uh, and soak. And soak uh, it. Yeah. Ground first and then soak. Uh, Julie, Not all the way around. Julie, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's vitamin E in a lot of different things. And I like rotating. I don't like using the same things over and over and over again, especially with food. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can, and, and you're right. If you're going to use seeds, like if you're going to use chia seeds or you're going to use anything like that, you want to make, personally, you want to make sure that you soak them. Awesome. Thank you guys for everything. Thanks for, for putting together that presentation for the costumes, for everything, for sharing with us. Yeah. We, yeah. We totally appreciate it. Uh, thanks for coming on late, super spooky, and for you guys early from Dubai. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, so much thank you guys for having us. Yeah. Well, thank you. you guys are always so much fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like we we are so passionate about talking about this because we are just so like so over all of this, like just this blindfolding, you know? Like we, we just feel like you know, if it has all of these things in it, then just say it so we can make an informed decision. Like, don't don't put a wrong label or don't try to mis, mis, uh, 
I'm missing this word. Represent. Mis yeah, misrepresent, mislead. That's what oh, I'm trying to get. Yeah. Like misleading pet parents. Like pet parents always act out of love. Anything we do, like nobody of us is getting something because they know it's bad. Like we all. No. Get Oh like yeah we we all make the decisions that we make out of love and then to find out later that that we were mis uh, misled yeah it's it's very heartbreaking so yeah thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to, to talk about it yeah <laughs> well, thank you for your passion and spreading the word and starting a business in dubai that was a big that was a big leap yeah. yeah that's a that's a that's a very new um you know i don't want to say trend setting because i don't mean trend setting but like you're you're kind of in the in the trailblazing yeah you're trailblazing you're in the in the yeah. thick of things for sure yeah. yeah which is awesome yeah and it really wasn't easy no <laughs> But it was a long road and we are so happy that we're almost this close at the finish line. But we're just, yeah, we're very happy with just, you know, being able to do what we love and yeah, spread, spread awareness about all this stuff that, you know, that. Do you have a YouTube station? Do you, what's the, do you actually have a YouTube channel or are they just yeah. things all over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, they're kind of all over and YouTube, okay. we need to get back on it. We've, we've been, there's a lot of comments actually, for some reason, we've just been getting like a lot of comments on our videos. So we need to get back into YouTube. I mean, you know, honestly, social media is so challenging. It's really not easy, you know, like <laughs> create video content and then edit it and then put it on we're going to put it on Facebook and then Facebook says, we're only going to show it to 150 people. Get out of here. And it's like, what? You know, <laughs> you put so much time and effort into it. And you're like, man, I'm not doing this anymore. And it's like, but then that's like, you know, like, then it's like, well, now I'm not helping more animals, you know, if I have this attitude, you know, and it's like, but, but uh, YouTube is showing us a lot of love right now. So we might need to like create more content for YouTube. And we have a lot of content. We have, we actually, we have this video of when we visited your plant, um, when we visited your compound thing facility. Uh, hopefully we can get that out really soon. That'll be one of the first videos that go up on YouTube when we get back on there. Yeah. Okay, that was fun, wasn't it? That was yeah, fun. awesome. We're so excited. It's, it's actually finished. We're just putting some uh, B-roll on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we can't wait yeah. to see it. That'll be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Put their okay, good. Oh yeah, yeah. I put the YouTube channel there. Follow Podega. They're on Facebook. They're on YouTube. They hang out on Instagram a lot. Um, yeah. They're here for us. Someone said on Facebook, your passion shines through and so does your joy. So thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. We'll see you on social. Thank you guys so much. See ya. Good night. Bye.